Hi, dickwad. It's me again, your best friend, Chucky. Why don't you come a little closer and sit by the fire? Unless you don't want to get roasted. <laughs> because if you don't have anything nice to say, then sit next to me. <laughs> Each week, with a little help from some people that work for me on my smash hit TV show named after me, we'll take a more in-depth look at the genius of my mind. As usual, I'll start by recapping what I'm always dying to share, all the fresh kills. This week, I went back to the basics and thought more inside the box with a good old fashioned strangling. Oh, and there's this doll, Chucky, he's alive. I don't know, how can a doll be alive? The whole idea kind of violates everything I believe in, right? Mm, yes, right. He had a chance to listen to her, but he choked. <laughs> I've killed dads before, but this is my first father. <laughs> I gotta confess, I never pass up an opportunity to kill a douchebag like this guy. I know this look. This is someone who is about to shit their pants. Sure, he's got a punchable face, but I wanted Trevor to know that I have his back. Hey kid, you used to have a heart. What happened? <laughs> what a fucking heart throb. <laughs> Those are the kills for this week. Instant classics if you ask me. So much heart in those murders. Okay, enough with the wordplay. And now, We'll go through the whole rest of the episode. Take it away, assholes. Lexi, in the bus on the way to the school, remembers that this school is actually where her former bully Trevor was sent in fourth grade after terrorizing her for months. Her mother sent him here as a punishment for bullying her. And I think that Trevor is the only person that Lexi's really been scared of other than Chucky. Fast forward a few episodes. Now he is the ultimate form of a bully. Have a blessed day. And is trying to frame Lexi for doing drugs at the school in her drawer. And that goes horribly wrong. Yes. As but Chucky is there, ready to pull his heart out of his chest, which is such an epic moment. Ready and three, two, one, action! It's one of my favorite deaths in the whole show. It's so cool. The kill scene. Best fucking part of every episode. The prosthetic was amazing. <laughs> Jordan, who plays Trevor, would walk around set with his prosthetic on and it just was just, his entire chest looked like it was just open. Well, he'd walk up to he's like, yo, um, I got an itch on my back, can you help me? And he'd turn around and the whole thing. Would be <clears> just <throat> open and out. bloody and disgusting. Go out. You can see the ribs and everything it was really weird. <laughs> oh, I love my job. It smelled like vinegar. It did smell like vinegar. It smelled really bad. It did smell bad. It smelled pretty good. I mean, oh I my like God. vinegar, so it, it, it was it was really yeah. bad. <laughs> Wait, we reprogram him. Like, brainwashing. Good Chucky is something I'd been thinking about for a long time. You know, when you work on a franchise, you, you know, think a lot about different ways you can reinvent it, different avenues to explore. And I'd always amuse myself to think about what would happen if Chucky was brainwashed. You know, in doing that a la Clockwork Orange, which we do in episode 203, and forcing him to watch violent slasher movies. Chucky is not an easy brainwash. Um, he's very hard to break. We try to play horrible videos for him, to get him to be disgusted by the thought of murder. Just getting him to a point like Malcolm McDowell and Clockwork Orange where the thought of violence sickens him. I just always thought that was a funny idea. I am a little hesitant in watching him vomit because vomit is gross, but I am excited to see how they do it. I'm a little wary though. Three, two, one, start. 
he ends up projectile throwing up in that thing. They, they hooked up this hose to the inside of Chucky and they covered him with like a trash bag. When I tell you it's a projectile, that thing shot so far. Like the pressure was like amazing. <laughs> it is the grossest thing you've ever seen. And then we go into stage two and show him puppies and kittens and rainbows and turn him into a good guy. I did get to hear my dad doing these different voices, some of which actually sounded a little more like my real father. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? And <laughs> so he's a it's always almost an ineffable experience. <laughs> it feels kind of comforting and also weird, you know. Oh, he would just suddenly get on the ground and crawl up to somebody and they'd be terrified. And what he was doing was retying their shoe. I'm hungry. Oh, it must be from all the vomiting. I had a higher voice and as silly as I could and at the same time being really able to, to make it real. As Milos Forman would say, yeah, but do it natural. Charlie Murphy. I guess with Devin, it's something similar. He's like, kind of like, I can finally give Chucky his own medicine. You know, I get to finally, you know, give him something to like be worried about. So I think when he throws up and when he's kind of, you know, feeling all bad and stuff, I'm like, yes, yes, it's working. And then when he becomes good Chucky, I'm like, no. Devin doesn't think that's not a real thing. That does not exist. Chucky cannot be good. I don't know. What could a little guy like me ever do to them? Since Nadine has only really seen Chucky as a good Chucky and like a sweet little alive real baby doll, she just has this picture in her head of just like this pure innocence. I don't think ever really goes away. Even though she, she never sees Chucky kill someone, she only sees bodies. So I feel like Nadine just has a very distorted perspective of what Chucky is. Playing Chucky as somebody good is really fun because he's not. It's an odd, almost irreverent <laughs> and, and campy and, and it was really fun. Cause he's just like, he's so like cute. I don't know. I find it really cute. Sure. I like cute. him. Good Chucky? Sure. I'm good at strangling, stabbing, electrocuting, clobbering, slash <laughs>